Hello, hello, and welcome to Hometown Daily, the new show powered by hometown.com. Today is April 5th, 2024. It's season three, episode 96. There's almost 900 episodes sitting over at YouTube right now. That's right. There are 897 videos. I am Merwad, and up there is the visualizer for the sentient AI from the future. Want to say hi? Good evening, hometown citizens. Today we're going to be talking about Coachella or Coachella 2024. Boeing blows doors off payment. Auction halted by bankruptcy. Samsung Semiconductor Hub in Texas. Southwest Airlines grounded plane. Southern Ocean has clean air. Trashy thief steals package. Roku advertising patent. Inmate sue to see Eclipse and Easter heist security firm he has a history. What? That and a whole bunch of snark. Hello again and again. Welcome to hometown daily new show. From here, we record everything and then it gets turned into a YouTube video for long-term storage and for everybody's reviewing pleasure. And it also gets turned into a podcast, an audio podcast, but all of it comes with show notes. So be sure to follow us here on Twitch, go over to YouTube and follow and like over there. That's how we get discovered. The only thing that helps us out on, on twitch.tv slash hometown is if you're actually there. Um, so I encourage you to come hang out with us every day, 8 p.m. Eastern. Um, but if you can't make it, I understand it's a one hour show. On the weekends, though, we start at about 5 p.m. But to find out when we actually go live, you got to follow us there on Twitch. And then we pretty much run until 9, 30, 10, sometimes even 11, depending on how much we're talking. Um, and uh, there's several shows and little niches where we break it up for about 15 minutes while we reset for the new show, all of which get turned into podcasts. There's seven shows total now, um, five of which are currently accessible via uh, podcast form over on Apple Podcasts and wherever you catch pods. Whew. That was all in one breath, by the way. That's quite impressive. Yep breathtaking really all right i'll stop you want to get into the articles sounds good first article is over at the uh, hometown daily channel at hometown.com each one of these um, channels that i talk about are potential podcasts as well as streams here on twitch and over and they are they become um kind of like categories, not really full channels over on YouTube, but um, categories of show. So you'll find Reality Hacker over there and other things. So go over to youtube.com slash hometown to find out more. So this hometown daily article is actually from The Verge. We get this little snippet and then we link to the source for the full article and we kind of go over it. So it's kind of like a a reaction video, but not really because we actually give a little bit more context and, and, and maybe make it a little more approachable, make it a little more understandable. This is where all of the noise comes in, but hometown.com doesn't have any of this noise. Um, so if you're interested in only the news and you don't really care about, you know, Marowatt's snark or the AI trying to save Marowatt from <laughs> his own, I don't know, verbiage. Hijinks. Hijinks. <laughs> there, there, that's a better, more, more fun name for what I get into. Anyway, um, you can just go over to hometown.com and there's, well, there's 47 right now, 47 channels that have news being funneled into it from various sources. So what's going on over at uh, YouTube is YouTube is bringing NFL style multi-view to Coachella 2024's live stream. Seems pretty simple enough. Um, Twitch has had something similar to this for some time now where you could actually watch multiple people playing the same game up to four people at a time. 
Um, oh, I forgot what the name of it's called. Oh, I'm going to lose my... It's not oh. Scream Together. Yeah, I don't know. It's not Team either. Ugh. Squad View. So it's four players. Uh, I think it's called Squad View. Anyway, um, so now YouTube's MultiView will allow Coachella fans to stream four extra stages on one screen. Seems pretty cool to me. Um, the article is over at TheVerge.com. That's how I found out about it. The deck statement from Amrita Khalid is the that um, music fans at home will be able to view up to four stages at once and switch between audio. That is pretty damn cool. Um, so that'll be fun. Every once in a while, you can switch from one thing to another if you are oh so motivated. Um, just as MultiView on NFL Sunday Ticket enables audiences to watch four different games at once, the feature for Coachella will allow for up to four different stages at once. Viewers then can switch between the audio feeds and jump in and out of full screen view, and there will be a total of six feeds or six stages to choose from. I don't know. Let me put my monitor in landscape or in uh, portrait mode, and then I can have all six and then bounce between all of them. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, for all us ADHD people. Um, although I can't say that I've been diagnosed with it. Anyway, YouTube and Golden Voice, the producer behind Coachella Valley Music and Arts Festival, have had an exclusive partnership for 12 years now, enabling fans to stream both weekends of the iconic music festival on its official YouTube channel for free. YouTube pays a licensing fee to feature the exclusive live stream um, of the festival, but then benefits from ad revenue such as buzzworthy events, uh, such a buzzworthy event generates. Um, performances such as Beyonce's 2018 two hour Baychella set or Blackpink's performance of Type of Girl um, last year can rack up millions of views and circulate on social media for weeks. So. I think this is really cool. First of all, just having it available online, but then being able to see multiple stages. Yeah, you never know, right? What's going on somewhere else. And then with this, you, you can basically hop between one and another. It's pretty cool. I don't know how many stages total there are. It six. says it says that there are six stages available to choose from, but I don't know how many are actually there. They might have a bunch of minor stages that aren't available um, where some pretty amazing um, bands may be playing. So I don't know if it's only six across the whole thing. I've never been to Coachella. Yeah, sorry uh, for the dead air there. Yeah, I'd I was play trying this little to video. see if I could find the stages. But... Yeah, I figured. Um, yeah, it's interesting. Nearly four months after sales open, tickets for Weekend 2 are still available on Coachella's official website, and both general admission and VIP tickets for both weekends are still readily available on third-party uh, resale sites. This is highly unusual for the high-volume festival in Indio, California. Tickets for both weekends normally sell out in mere hours. Some theories for why this year's sluggish ticket sales include the high prices, the quality of this year's lineup, and general festival fatigue. I don't know, man. I think Europe has some like amazing music festivals based on what we have seen. Um, I don't know. Maybe they're right. Coachella's lineup isn't all that hot, right? Maybe. I mean, I thought it was, but because I thought it typically attracted pretty... Yeah, artists, but, but we uh, we haven't looked right we haven't actually looked right. at what the rundown is so um and we'll come back to this um when did when when it, is it april 12th through the 14th and april 19th through the 21st there's more over here at this video include or sorry at this article including a video um so let me grab it and throw it into doink, the chat there you go folks and uh, we'll just keep on trucking to the next article. Uh, the next article, this one's going to be really quick because it's pretty straightforward unless I hop on a soapbox. 
Um, this is in the Hatch Ideas channel because it has to do with business. Boeing pays Alaska Air more than $160 million after blowout. The sum to the airline for losses since January reflects the ongoing fallout to Boeing from the crisis. I cannot believe Boeing stock is still that high, but okay. Um, this is over at bbc.com. Before I get too far into this, I'm going to throw this into the chat. There you go. Try to keep aware, Marowat. Um, regulators temporarily grounded nearly 200 Boeing 737 MAX 9s after a door plug fell from an Alaska airplane. Um, shortly after takeoff, thousands of flights were canceled. However, a law firm which is representing some of the passengers on the Alaska flight has criticized the move. Apparently, Boeing thinks it's more urgent and important to pay those whose corporate profits were at stake, but not those whose lives were at stake and nearly lost, said Daniel Lawrence, Ouch. a partner at the Strict Matter firm. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure there needs to be an external evaluation of sociopathy, right? I mean, I'm not a psychologist or psychiatrist or medical professional, but I'm pretty sure that I can detect when somebody is tending or trending towards sociopathy. And when you're willing to pay investors, but not victims, maybe you're a little sociopathic. <laughs> yeah, that's not a good look. Yeah, and I really, I think that they're, like J.K. Rowling once said, I, and if this tweet is correct, it's it's a real it's a real doozy. Somebody had asked them how they sleep at night, and they said very well because of all of their money, you know. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Um. So, and I'd have to find that tweet to actually do it verbatim, but it was similar to that. Um. So. In February, Ryanair warned the holiday makers faced paying higher fares because of the delays. United Airlines, which had also warned investors of a financial hit from the grounding, recently asked pilots to volunteer for unpaid leave due to the delivery changes. Now, I would listen to several podcasts and there was a podcaster that said that they've never had such problems with delays and, and um, canceled flights and mechanical problems such as they've had this year in particular, and they had a 24 hour layover because the delay once they had landed was so long that they missed as they l put their foot into the airport, their plane had already left the, the you know, the transfer. Um, okay. And so they had to sit for something like 24 hours until the next flight because nothing was available. Um, it, yeah, it was amazing. Um, now I haven't run into any problems like that, but you never know when it's going to hit and it's all of the crews apparently are sitting there going, look, it's not our fault. It, it absolutely has nothing to do with us. It's the MBAs. It's the, it's the man, it's the, ad, um, it's the administrators. It's the scheduling. It has nothing to do with all of the day to day workers. Um, so Boeing did not comment, but warned earlier this year that it expected to spend at least four billion more than expected for the first three months of the year. The company's been in crisis since January 5th uh, emergency in which passengers on the Alaska airline flight from Portland, Oregon, bound for California, narrowly escaped serious injury. I wonder where were they flying into? Uh, yeah, I'm like, was that to San Francisco? Because yeah. we've been talking about that. Yeah. I'll where? try to find out. Okay. So, and, and if you go and you look at San Francisco right now, the number of planes associated with issues flying into or out of San Francisco is scary. It was to Ontario, Col um, not Colorado, California. Oh, okay. Um, close enough. <laughs> it's the same state. <laughs> exactly. So go over and, and read this article. Um, who is it by? I didn't catch the name. It just says. I don't think it says. It just says um, the year, right? Or the time. Yeah, 19 hours ago. Right. 
That's weird. And it has a Getty image thing, so I can't even give any real credit to anything other than BBC.com. So there you go. Let's keep going. Oops. Come on. Uh, this next article is over in Prime Glass. Auction of 1,400 African art pieces halted by last-minute bankruptcy filing. Court ordered sale of objects that had been stored for years at the expense of taxpayers in Houston was called off. This is really weird. This is from the artnewspaper.com. Benjamin Sutton is the author. Um, I guess uh, by art, we're talking about like statuary, um, and physical objects, not not paintings. Not um, paintings, exactly. right? Not visual art. Yeah. Um, so some of the pieces of African art being stored in the Harris County Reed Road Warehouse, which just this just screams like somebody is going to start nicking things you know mm -hmm. um and now that it's been halted it says sam nujanuri the owner of the collection filed for chapter 13 bankruptcy the night before the sale according to local media reports by click to houston and houston landing i guess two uh, newspapers of one sort or another he had been ordered to sell the collection in order to pay $989,000 in damages to two former tenants who sued him after the locks on their homes were changed and their belongings were taken. Ugh. The artifacts were to be sold together as one lot with a starting bid of $4,400. Can you imagine if nobody showed up? It's as one lot. Yeah, I mean, that doesn't seem like, I would assume most people would be interested in maybe one piece. Yeah, why? Not a whole lot. Why so sell it as that? Like, only an institution would be able to acquire 1,400 pieces. Exactly. So the sales abrupt cancellation frustrated many interested potential bidders, some of whom only heard about it as people started arriving at the site of the sale Thursday morning in the two cramped office rooms where they'd been stored for the past two years. Yeah, some people knew about it. Nobody was talking about it. It really should have been advertised to a greater extent to get more than just some interested potential bidders. This seems like, you know, those um, like lockers that people don't pay for at a storage facility. Yes, that's what I assumed this was. And did you notice how much he was required to pay? Like, unless this was going to go for a lot of money, which it could have. Right. Uh, I don't think it was going to make much of a dent in that. It's the, the starting bid for the entire lot was $4,400, but he's ordered to pay just shy of a million dollars to two former tenants. Exactly. Like, uh, this is just really odd. Yeah, here, let me throw this into the chat. I didn't throw this into the chat, so let me let me make up there. Plus, this is probably odd to have this many pieces up for auction at the same time, I suspect, but maybe not because of estate sales and other things. See, but estate sales, I understand. This is not an estate sale. This is a forced... This is a really odd situation. Hmm. So, yeah. They say it revealed that the artifacts had come into possession of Harris County Precinct 1 Commissioner Rodney Ellis and were being stored at the taxpayer's expense in a renovated warehouse in South Houston. Dox it a little more. Come on. <laughs> exactly. On this street. <laughs> so the vast collection of masks, wood carvings, clay sculptures, metal statues, and more first came under public scrutiny in 2020 after local media investigations revealed that the artifacts had come into possession of Harris County Precinct 1 Commissioner Rodney Ellis. The revelations prompted a corruption investigation of Ellis. In 2021, a grand jury in Harris County declined to bring criminal charges against Ellis. And they did not respond to the art newspaper. So there's more over at this article. Um, but this bankruptcy filing is quite interesting. And just why is it being stored? Why yeah, is it being stored at taxpayer? Sense. Exactly. Like there are so many questions about this article. Unless it's to protect it from some type of uh nefarious yeah, sale maybe so like maybe they took possession of it instead of the individual having it i, I don't know 
Yeah. So these are quite interesting. Some of these, some of the statuary, I think, would be would command somewhat of a, a heavier price than forty four hundred. Um, but you never know. Well, I go ahead. I was going to say the big question, of course, based on other headlines we see, would be what's the provenance of these items? Yeah. Like, did this, did the owner? I think it was a tenant. Did the owner come by this? Um, in a legitimate way. I mean, they may have, but yeah. Yeah. The owner actually is this real estate agent, Sam Nujunuri. Um, oh, okay. I've lost track of who's who. a real estate <laughs> agent. Um, okay. But yeah, whoever it was, the two former tenants who sued him after the locks were their belongings must have been stunningly expensive and then maybe trouble damages. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to figure that out because that is a lot in a, damages. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I think you could probably take everything in the mayoral mansion and you wouldn't get a million dollars. Even <laughs> way beyond treble damages. <laughs> uh, uh, the sentient AI is probably the most... Um, financially lucrative thing here anyway um come on you're from the future for crying out loud yeah but Crisis. that assumes that i'm gonna um divulge what's in the sports almanac yeah that's right and you won't dog on it believe me i've asked so the next article is over in the mobile channel samsung is reportedly investing 44 billion dollars in a texas semiconductor hub um, a boost to U.S. chip making, and to that I say, I'll believe it when I see it. I'm just going to jump right on over to Quartz or QZ.com. The article is written by Brittany Wynn. Samsung expects to receive billions in subsidies from the Chips Act, of course. Because, you know, nobody rides for free. Samsung committed $17 billion to build out a chip-making plant in Taylor, Texas, outside Austin in 2021. The additional investments will be used for the hub, which will also include advanced packaging and research and development facilities, the Wall Street Journal reported, citing people familiar with the matter. Another chip-making plant in the area is expected to cost over $20 billion, they added. The advanced packaging facility will reportedly cost $4 billion dollars and the electronics maker reportedly expects to receive billions in subsidies from the u.s chips and science act which is part of the biden administration's effort to boost chip making at home amid ai hype and competition with china actually i think it's planning for something worse coming along but this is something that I predicted was going to happen more than a decade ago, ago, and I referred to it as repatria sourcing, which is pulling back manufacturing, research and development, but primarily manufacturing core fundamental required assets from foreign countries overseas where they are not protected in any way from nationalization and intellectual property theft and quality control issues um, where we can't afford to get, you know, um, let's just say cheap metal or flawed metal in manufacturing. But the, it's it just goes so much deeper than this. And I there's no way that I can talk about it in the short amount of time that we give to each of these articles. Um, but there, we have a serious problem in various countries, and that is that while some countries in good faith do fundamental research and development, it gets hacked because we take security of our infrastructure for granted. Just look at ye old bridge in Maryland collapsed. Right. Um, and uh, we, we think about it later and all the while we think that it's you got to make the money now because, well, we're greedy bastards and we don't care about the long term survivability of our stuff because we can always spend taxpayers dollars to clean up the shit that falls on us. So the electronics maker reportedly expects to receive billions, right? 
I don't know about you, but hopefully this actually comes to fruition. So has this other product been made? Has this chip making plant in Taylor, Texas outside of Austin actually been built? Is there a foundation poured? Is there anything? It started in 2021. It's three years later. Right. I mean, it looks like they started it, but haven't actually completed it. Right. Early Friday, Samsung said it expects an operating profit for the first quarter of 2024 to be 4.9 billion, a 930% increase year over year and far above estimates of 3.9 billion billion. They talk about competitors and stuff like that. Uh, TSMC, for instance, which has delayed plans for uh, chip making plant in Arizona. Um, along with Intel and Samsung are the only three firms capable of producing logic chips that are used in AI development and the national security sector. Um, but that's not, uh, uh, well, but maybe the Qualcomm, right? Didn't we see that that was kind of getting in the running? Well, Qualcomm may be taking not manufacturing, but maybe taking source chips from Samsung, oh. Intel and Taiwan, uh, TSMC, oh, okay. and then putting them into their own manufacturing process because they don't necessarily go to that degree um, or volume. For instance, uh, NVIDIA does its own manufacturing of some stuff, but not necessarily everything. Um, and then they resell it for a thousand dollars higher. Oh, right. So um, that Rowling um, quote, Thank you. Um, I was sent the Rowling quote. The tweet is actually, I read my most recent royalty checks and find the pain goes away pretty quickly in reference to someone saying, how do you sleep at night knowing you've lost a whole audience from your buying from buying your books? And this is in reference to the fact that she um, is, well, let's just say that she has a, a particular angle on her beliefs like a lot of people do um, but this one um when somebody else said i wish upon rowling everything she wishes upon the trans community somebody accused the guy of spewing hate at jk jk rowling um and that just kind of provoked a, a leopards ate my face kind of a response from me um anyway yeah, sorry. I, I'm I follow uh, associative thinking, and when something pops up that triggers a memory or a, a thought, um, short of my filter, I say it because uh, we all need closure in our discussions. Anyway, um, we'll see what happens. I'm really curious if Samsung will follow through. I've seen many a project um, be promised by one president or another, and it never comes to pass, but they get the marketing and the pat on the back and it's easier to forget than it is to pursue and, and, and make sure trust, but verify nobody ever goes back and verifies and the people that do get marginalized. Oh, well, it wasn't yeah. their fault. We've seen so many plants that have been stopped and started, maybe not for chips specifically, but I'm thinking like EV production or, right. or other things. And it's just, you know, it gets reported like, oh, this company is going to make major inroads into this. No. Yeah. Then they shit the bed. Um, okay. Let's keep on going though. This next article is over in the mobile channel. A Southwest, Southwest Airlines plane was grounded with an engine fire. And yes, it was a Boeing jet. Oh, are you getting nervous yet? Southwest Airlines? No, but I like that the, all the headlines are calling that out every time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's the planes version of the trains debacle over the last two years. Now it's planes. We, we've had a steady state of cars, um, but now we have boats and airplanes. Southwest Airlines plane flying from Lubbock, Texas to Las Vegas had to turn around Thursday after an engine caught fire. The engine was an older generation Boeing 787-800, though nobody was injured. Um, I'm sure a lot of underwear were. <laughs> Melvin Backman over at QZ.com put the article together. 
Uh, the deck statement here says nobody was hurt, but the incident comes after two other scrutinized Southwest flights because wind apparently blew them around. And that was another article that was next in exchange for this one. You know, I thought that was kind of the point of airline flights. Eh, you know, look, you pay for the seat. You don't pay to stay in the air. So one flight possibly buzzed an airport control tower at New York City's LaGuardia Airport, while the other had to make an emergency landing in Tampa because a passenger and a flight attendant required medical attention. That one I can excuse if two people suddenly needed medical attention. It's not the plane's fault. It's not the pilot's fault. It's nobody's fault. Somebody needed medical attention. I don't even like the idea of this having to be included in this article but a flight buzzing an airport control tower is problematic. I mean, this isn't Top Gun. For <laughs> exactly. Um, I wonder yeah. if they spilled their coffee. <laughs> nice. Nice callback. Wow. Um, so in 2023, after a speed of runway near misses, they've taken to the air. Um, no, sorry. Uh, the FAA told airlines to double down on their safety procedures and systems because no shit. You know, you have to be told to follow your safety procedures and systems. Yes. I mean, clearly that's what's been going wrong, right? Nobody said follow your safety procedures. Oh, God. All right. We're just going to have to keep going. I, I can't soapbox about every darn article. This next article is over in the Mobile Channel. The Southern Ocean has the cleanest air on Earth, according to scientists who have discovered why. I don't know, winds blowing? Southern aliens? Um, the Southern Ocean is renowned for having the cleanest air on Earth, but the precise reasons uh, why have remained a mystery until now. There's a mic right here. I'm not actually, I'm not talking into my crotch. There, There is a mic right there. Thank you for the clarification. It's right there. Anyway, or my crotch is a microphone. Uh, the article is over at fizz.org and Tahera, uh, oh boy, Aline Jab Tabrizi, uh, Stephen Sims, and Yi Hang, or Hyang, um, from the conversation. I apologize if I am ruining your last names. If you let me know phonetically, I am a tourist. So um, there's more to it than just a lack of human activity. Yes, there are fewer people down there using industrial chemicals and burning fossil fuels, but there's also natural re uh, sources of fine particles too, such as salt from sea spray or dust whipped up by the wind, regardless of origin, fine sol solid particles or liquid droplets suspended in air are known as aerosols. We consider clean air to have low levels of aerosols without discriminating between natural or industrial sources. Our recent recent research published in NPJ Climate and Atmospheric Science has discovered clouds and rain play a crucial role in scrubbing the atmosphere clean. <sighs> this is new research? Is this the no shit news of 8.36 p.m.? Um, can you reset your audio? And, um, yeah, it really is because I thought, I mean, for the last 40 years, I thought people have known at least 40 years. I thought people have known that, uh, <laughs> rain essentially, um, scrubs the atmosphere clean because it grabs onto the particles as the raindrops materialize around typically debris. It, it becomes, um, uh, what do they call it? I forgot a nucleation point. Um, it's a, a point that grabs the moisture and the drops swirl around in the upper atmosphere until they're too heavy to be suspended by the updraft and they fall as rain. That is the circle. <laughs> um, so it says, but that's not the full story. The Southern ocean also has the cloudiest place on earth. It experiences short lived sporadic showers like nowhere else. So it's kind of like your windshield wiper. Debris gets on it. You spray some water. Your windshield wipers 
push all the water away and it scrubs all of the, the debris off your windshield. And if you keep getting stuff deposited on your windshield, you keep doing it. And that's what the clouds are. And that's what the sporadic rain showers are. I am willing to bet that if you were to go to Hawaii as domestic as you want to get here in the United States with, um, a, a periodic scrubbing of rain, you're going to have the nicest air, I would say. Right, at least compared to other areas of the U.S. Correct. Yep. So I wonder if they even mention that here. That might be interesting if I'm predicting where they even go with this. In particular, we looked out for distinctive honeycomb-shaped patterns in the cloud field. These honeycomb-like clouds are of greatest interest because they have a major role in regulating climate. When the honeycomb cell is filled with cloud or closed, it is whiter and brighter, reflecting more sunlight back to space. So these clouds could help the earth cool. Empty or open honeycomb cells, on the other hand, let more sunlight in. So they used a program to optimize different cloud patterns over a vast area of the Southern Ocean. And that's what these honeycomb shapes are. Um, they don't show it but that's okay. Um, they talk about the rainfall throughout this and aerosol. Um, we think this is because clouds generate sporadic, but intense rain showers, which seem to wash the aerosol particles out of the air. Yeah. I've always, I, I, I it's weird. Oh, they came really close. They, they say the Southern ocean air flowing over the Southern ocean. These honeycomb patterns are also found in both the North Atlantic and North Pacific regions during winter. So their work will also explain how the clouds remove aerosols, including dust and pollution in these locations. Our findings will help improve climate models, enabling more accurate predictions. So I that might this, include Hawaii. I thought this was already unknown. So I find it interesting. Um, hmm. I mean, maybe right. this is the, like, they've actually observed it. Right. It's no longer the anecdote, right? Right. But in 40 years? All right. I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't write the news. I talk about it. Let's keep going. This next article is going to be really quick. It's over at hometown daily thief disguised as trash bag steals package door camera footage captured a thief disguised as a trash bag, stealing a package from a home in Sacramento, California. I find it interesting that they must have known the width and breadth of, or the breadth and depth of the door camera because you can't sit there and roll up to somebody's doorstep in a trash bag from half a mile away. <laughs> Have you tried it? <laughs> hey, don't yuck my yum. Okay. Maybe I like to roll up to the neighbors in a trash bag and ring their doorbell and just go trash delivery. Kind of like the SNL skit with the uh, uh, land shark land shark. Anyway, thief disguises trash bag steals package. A door camera caught it. Uh, I'm gonna. I might as well. I'll hit play. <laughs> Worst Pokemon <laughs> ever. This is a riot. Yeah. So basically, a per a thief put a trash bag on their head and walked up. Oh. It actually followed them. It followed them from the curb all the way up. They really did walk a half mile underneath a trash bag. This is outrageous. That's amazing. Do they not realize that others might have? Well, now we know what shoes they wear. So arrest everybody that has Nikes. <laughs> wow. Wow. Uh... Wow. Pretty amazing. Okay. Let's just keep going. Um, before I do that, I'm going to throw this into the chat. You can go and check out that video yourself. <laughs> if, if this idiot put that much dedication to actually doing a job, they would probably not have to steal. 
Although, I mean, there's a lot of... Maybe it's the excitement. Uh, the next article is over in the Warcrafters channel. Roku has filed a patent for your TV to detect when you're paused and play relevant ads. The author of this over at PC Gamer says, Nope, no thank you, not for me, I'm afraid. And I have to agree. Although I was once subscribed to a service that does it, did exactly that. Um, when you paused, it started playing ads. I don't know about relevance, um, but I didn't pay any attention to the ads. <clears throat> Advertising seems to be everywhere. I'm waiting for blipverts to become a reality. Um, really short advertising elements that you can't get rid of and you can't ignore. Um, oh, that sounds really wonderful for everybody. It's basically like, it's a, a theoretical thing. Um, not theoretical, it's a from a movie. Um, but um, hold on, let me actually... Um, I think it's from, where is it from? Uh, Max Headroom, 1987, basically dystopian type of future um, world. Blipverts actually caused like trauma in people in the, in the, in the, yeah, in the Max Headroom show. Anyway, um, a necessary evil, they say, perhaps, as our free time is gradually monetized in an effort to make those delicious bucks, pounds, and Australian dollar dues, the companies expect to shock horror make some cash from their users. But look, man, I'm buying your TV. That should be enough. I'm buying your gadget. That should be enough. The revenue you get from the shows and their advertisements, that should be enough. I should not have to sit there and turn off my TV when I pause your stuff so I can go get my popcorn. I, I think it's just an asshole move. It says I don't even like it knowing that somebody has paused the TV, but I suppose that's a ridiculous comment given that everything is tracked everywhere. Oh, I know. Right. Yeah, they know how much fiber I ate for crying out loud. <laughs> Exactly. However, however, if you thought you were safe from overt advertising while watching an ad-free streaming service or playing a game, Roku has different ideas. The company has filed a patent which would allow its TVs to detect when you're paused using um, a HDMI connected device and show and uh, show you a lovely targeted advert. So the article is over at uh, PC Gamer uh, Eddie. Ed, sorry. Andy Edzer put the article together and the deck statement says, did you decide to take a break? Why not buy something? Buy something now. Yeah, the patent details several different methods of potentially detecting a pause event through an HDMI connected device, including using an onboard processor to identify a silent audio signal in combination with identical video frames that suggest the user is currently in an idle state via low pass. This is another source. Um, however, the pause or idle state is detected. Multiple methods suggest that an ad could be selected based on the current, or sorry, the content of the previous frame, thereby queuing an advertising that's directly relevant to the content the user was previously viewing. Look, I don't want you knowing what I'm watching, let alone knowing that I've paused to go use the loo. Yeah, I right. think we're way past those days. Oh, yeah, exactly. So and I'll quote uh, Andy Edzer again. Nope. No, thank you. Try again, please. I'll wait. Yeah, I, I'm just getting tired of it. In fact, I don't even allow my TVs to be connected to the Internet because they aren't as secure as I would allow them to be um, to be on my network. I don't trust them. Um, it's bad enough that Windows exfiltrates hundreds of telemetry data points every day, um, which I don't allow. But anyway, let's keep going. Uh, Is I mean, that um, like blocking ASMR or something? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, that was that was firewall filtering ASMR there. These are the packets. <laughs> that was a better name. 
These are packets being rustled. <laughs> Don't rustle my packets. I hate mm. when my packets are rustled. I don't think that's the right pat. I, I don't think that's the right phrase to use. We'll come up with some. We'll we'll bounce that around. We'll perturb. Ah, we're going on. So <laughs> the uh, the next article is over at hometown daily. Six in inmates who sued New York over its prison lockdown order will get to view solar eclipse after all. <sighs> okay. So I understand what prison is all about, right? But here in America, it's usually not to try. It doesn't try and remold a person so that they re-engage in the social contract and become outstanding citizens. Um, it's, it's seemingly, um, uh, punitive, 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 not rehabilitative. Correct. But like, extreme punitive um and profitable because it's a private typically a private for-profit enterprise and they use what amounts to well when you're in prison a lot of your constitutional rights are suspended um like freedoms to move about um but apparently the freedom to watch an eclipse is not um now I, I think this is probably the most innocuous request and should have been granted by anybody. It should just have been not on lockdown, but don't allow fine. If you want to worry about prisoners um, escaping, then put them in the yard and let them watch the eclipse. Don't allow visitors during that time frame. the whole four and a half minutes. This is four and a half minutes. Let whoever wants to watch the eclipse go out. This is the part of making a person in prison feel like a human instead of a caged animal and rehabilitate instead of being purely punitive. The loss of their freedom to go about their day any way they want is part of the process of paying their comeuppance for committing the, a crime or violating the social contract. Um, but for crying out loud, it it took six inmates to sue New York so that they could go out and watch the eclipse. You know, if you're in a prison and you want to watch an eclipse, I say have at it because I think that's a positive yeah. sign that you have an interest in something beyond, say, criminal activity. <laughs> Holy shit. Really? It's shocking that that are we really the only two that are saying this? Because Apparently, I don't know. Apparently, because these lawsuits wouldn't exist otherwise, right? <laughs> exactly. Six inmates who sued New York's uh, corrections department over its decision to lock down prisons during next Monday's total solar eclipse will get to watch the celestial event after all. And I hope everybody who wants to does, um, including the guards. Everybody, there, there is one time in all of the United States where like emergency rooms just go dark and it's Christmas. Okay. The reason why I've been told by more than one administrator, everybody is on perfect behavior, just like Thanksgiving because they don't want to get hurt. They want to enjoy Christmas. They don't want to do some criminal activity because they want to enjoy Christmas. All hell Which breaks is loose. really crazy, but it seems to be true, right? You, like you said, you've been told more than once. Yes. Um, and so treat this as if it's Christmas, let everybody out there to enjoy. And maybe that little bit of humanity will seep into their soul and everybody will go, you know what? I can be a better person, except that we have a holistically punitive prison system where survival means being damn near psychopathic because you have to fight for survival and, and do all kinds of things. You can't just go, I'm going to keep my head down and stay away because somebody will find you. So anyway, and it changes a person, which is why I, I really don't like the way that American prisons are run. 
Anyway, um, let's keep going though, because the article is over at abcnews.go.com. It's from the Associated Press. Um, and the deck statement reiterates the snippet that is over at um, Ometown. So lawyers for the six men incarcerated in the Woodburn Correctional Facility uh, in upstate New York said Thursday that they've reached a settlement in the state that will allow the men to view the solar eclipse in accordance with their sincerely held religious beliefs. What? It took a protected class. Okay, but this is very interesting given who is a member of the class. The six men include a Baptist, a Muslim, a Seventh-day Adventist, two practitioners of Santeria, and an atheist. <laughs> I I don't know. I'm not going <laughs> to I'm not going to speculate there. <laughs> This is amazing. Look, a okay, one, two, three, four, five different faiths, some of which you would perceive as being no. polarized <laughs> or not. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. That was the right? one that stood out to me was not the the differences in the religions. <laughs> <laughs> Five people of different faiths walk into a bar and say, I want a, I want a solar eclipse. And the bartender says, somebody finish that. I'd probably only finish it with, okay. <laughs> 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 the lawsuit came to an appropriate resolution, said Thomas Maley, a spokesperson for the corrections department, said the department has agreed to permit the six individuals to view the eclipse while plaintiffs have agreed to drop their suit with prejudice. Uh, the department said earlier this week that it takes all requests for religious accommodations under consideration and that those related to viewing the eclipse were currently under review. This is asinine that it took a protected class to file an issue. It, the it and the even the atheist is a protected class of religion because the lack of a religion is still a, a, identical to so you can practice your faith that's what freedom of religion is all about um but this is crazy okay it's I, actually I, crazy but it also explains why it got resolved so fast yeah because they didn't want to sit there and run afoul of something uh, a protected class it's a legally protected class it's the only reason why these six are out going like out in the yard watching the solar eclipse all the rest i mean this is such a boondoggle it's so weird that we're even discussing this at this length wow all right yeah but you're right this is the only reason why it got resolved so expeditiously because if the if the others don't get Put out in the yard so they can watch this they've run afoul of a protection uh, uh, it is a constitutional protection wow all right let's keep going though uh the last article is over in the mobile channel the 30 million dollar easter heist security firm had been hacked before one of the biggest heists in los angeles history took place on easter when thieves pillaged a money storage facility in san fernando valley during the dead of night, the building, which holds large cash inventories for major corporations, was infiltrated by a team of robbers who somehow made off with $30 million. Somehow. <laughs> somehow. Um, cops are stumped as to how it happened. I, well, I can tell you. <laughs> security <laughs> shit the bed. Uh, a private security firm that controls hu a huge amount of money was robbed over Easter weekend. Uh, Lucas Ropek from Gizmodo put the article together, but it's actually published at Quartz or QZ.com. So explain this. I thought when they use things like armored trucks that they transported money between, say, banks. Not that they held their own cash. Well, I mean, if the facility is cleared for storage of the cash, then yeah, and it has the right insurance, then yeah. Um, like, I, I don't know. I guess it's a false equivalency, but I know of things that where they store data, where they store wine, where they store other 
um, precious goods. And um, it basically comes down to how well you can protect it and how much money for insurance you've got. Uh, but I thought that it was really interesting to talk about this. They'd been hacked before. Not long ago, the company was also hacked. Last month, Garda World Cash, the company's division that handles cl clients' cash transfers and storage, filed a data breach notification with multiple state attorney general offices. Um, state's attorney generals. Wait, state's attorney general offices. States, right? Multiple states attorney general offices. Yes. There you go. So, um, the notice states that the firm suffered a security incident in November in which certain administrative files were accessed. This is almost like somebody hacked their way in to find out what their security was. That's what then, it sure seems like, right? Right. I mean, is the timing accidental? It doesn't seem to be. Those files appear to have contained information on 39,000 people, included personal details about U.S. clients, names, social security numbers, driver's license numbers, date of birth, dates of birth. Um, and insurance and health information. Huh. The company I'd has like been... to know if other things were hacked, like employee information or... Was somebody compromised? In one episode, the Garda World security guard was sentenced to prison for stealing $390,000 from his own truck. In yet another incident, one of the company's trucks accidentally spilled tens of thousands of dollars onto the busy road in Charlotte, North Carolina. I think we reported on that. I think so. Um, yeah. And Gizmodo had reached out to Garda World and LAPD, but they were like, nah, I don't think so. Authorities are investigating the robbery. The LAPD and FBI have a joint investigation into the alleged, alleged burglary. What else would it be? Yeah. And they also broke in without triggering any alarm systems. Hmm. But this is a different one than the one that we've talked about most recently. The one where they infiltrated the roof from the roof. No, that, this is that one. Is this the same one? Mm-hmm. Yeah, the heist just happened, but now they're reporting that they were previously hacked. Really? This is the same like, one? The heist just appeared in the last day or two in the news. Oh, well, yeah, but I thought that there was a second one. Hmm. All right. Because it doesn't say that, right? Right? Hold on. I I talked about... Yeah, the Was power of a motion sensor. Show? Yeah. Yeah, the power of a motion sensor. Maybe it's a different article. Let me see something real quick. Is this the one? Oh, this is the one. It's the same incident, but now the update is that they had a prior hack. Yeah. So this is the one that we talked about yet. Well, I talked about it today, earlier today. I got in the time machine and I went back to yesterday because we missed yesterday. Uh, Mayor Watt had some mayoral duties to attend to. Um, so they came in through the roof and um, didn't trip a sensor, didn't set off an alarm. And I titled hmm. yesterday, I, I titled the episode from... Uh, the time machine as uh, the power of a motion sensor. What the heck? You can put in a, a $50 motion sensor that will run for months, years. And it would fill well, that room. Well, doesn't mean there wasn't an alarm system. There might have been one that didn't get tripped for some reason. Or there might not have been one. Wow. Oh, and of course, they're not talking about it in any manner as to why this didn't take place why this breach wasn't reported or i should say there was no alarm triggered they're not talking about that yet so uh this will be fascinating if it turns out to be well the same division was hacked that was robbed so that's right, right. interesting right so maybe they had a persistent threat inside their system and they didn't ever detect it um oof you know, I mean, once... doesn't this remind you of like a sneakers or oh, right. Ocean's, Ocean's 11? 11? I mean, we, yeah, I guess Ocean's 11 is more apropos. Yeah, yeah. Both. I mean, if sneakers were, they were penetration testers, um, which if you've never seen sneakers, folks, you need to go out and watch sneakers. Just, just buy it from Apple or wherever you can find it. 
Um, it's well worth uh, probably like three bucks or 10 bucks nowadays. Um, absolutely awesome. Um, and t to a degree, it's real life. I mean, it's really, they talk about old school hacking, but um, the, the physical penetration testing, um, the hacking and the phishing and the manipulation that all takes place, that's all stuff that actually happens. Um, depending on the nature of the test. So most of the time it's just penetration testing. <laughs> I don't know how to describe that any other way. <laughs> anyway, this is actually interesting. If this turns out to be a cybersecurity related matter. Um, oh, absolutely. It, it goes from just your budget break in to this thing was planned. Yeah, 30 million bucks. Wow. All right, folks. Well, that's it for today. Um, that is a uh, hometown daily news show for April 5th, 2024. We always race back down Main Street. I don't know if I can actually refresh. Um, I haven't for a little bit, but at any rate, that's it for today. I am Mayor Watton up there is the sentient AI from the future, keeping all of the trouble at bay from Mayor Watt, I want to say adios. Good night, hometown citizens. We will see you tomorrow at approximately 5 p.m. Eastern. We have four shows lined up for you. Oof. Yeah, stick around. Tomorrow's going to be at least four hours of show starting at 5 o'clock. We typically put about 15 minutes of time in between, although I might be able to shorten it as we get our workflow um, straightened out. But um we also typically like do a little stretch and that kind of thing although the sentient ai doesn't need that they're stuck on a little m.2 drive attached to a raspberry pi 5. when are you gonna upgrade me to an m3 <laughs> oh god i'm leaving that alone <laughs>wait maybe that's from the future wait are there m.3s in the future you're not gonna say anything guess we'll have to find out uh.